And lift off. Lift off for Falcon Heavy with Europa Clipper. The Europa Clipper spacecraft blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center in the US state of Florida on a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. The CSIRO's Deep Space Communication Center outside Canberra will play an integral role in maintaining communication with the probe in outer space as the Earth rotates. We actually made first contact with the spacecraft, acquisition of signal just after it's separated from its launch vehicle, and now have this two-way communication going on. So the mission team can send commands to the spacecraft, we can get telemetry back, knowing that the spacecraft is healthy and on this amazing journey off to this ocean world. We've got a lot of tracking to do. We need to make sure the mission knows exactly where their spacecraft is, know its speed, direction, and keep it on track for all these close planetary flybys of Mars and Earth that needs to be very precise in those flybys so that it gets that perfect gravitational pick to pick up the speed in the direction it needs to get to its final destination. And the probe will arrive at Europa in 2030, making 49 flybys and coming as close as 25 kilometres above the surface. Previous missions to Europa revealed evidence there could be vast oceans beneath the ice crust, providing the potential for life to exist. We scientists have been dreaming about a mission like Europa Clipper for more than 20 years. We've been working to build it for 10 years. It's going to be another 10 years because Jupiter's so far away until we have all the science in the bag. And I'm really proud that as humanity that we choose to undertake these difficult and long-term goals, things like exploring the unknown out of Jupiter. Let's get more on this. Europa Clipper navigation engineer Sarah Elizabeth McCandless joins us now from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Sarah Elizabeth, great to have you. Uh, as someone so close to this mission, and I understand you planned the spacecraft's trajectory, how are you feeling today? I'm not sure that I have words for how I'm feeling right now. Um, I've been supporting this mission since 2019. I know in the, the clip you just showed of our director, Lori Leshen, she said, you know, we've been working toward this mission for, you know, over 20 years now. So I've been supporting Clipper for five years and I feel like, you know, I'm one of the newest people on the project. Um, so I, as you mentioned, I'm a navigation engineer. So it's our job essentially to figure out how we can safely get this spacecraft all the way out to Jupiter and then how we can safely orbit it about Jupiter so that it can perform all of these really cool flybys around Europa to conduct all this really cool science to help us better understand this icy world and help us better understand if it has the conditions that could support life. Yeah, so you're not looking for life itself, uh, but the conditions for it. What are the hints? Uh, what, what information do we have so far? What do we know about Europa? Yeah, it's a great question. So this mission is special because it's the first time that we're sending a spacecraft to study Europa specifically. So as you mentioned, you know, we've uh, sent spacecraft out to the Jupiter system before. So we know a little bit about Europa, but this is the first time we'll be studying it in depth. So with the past missions that we've sent to Jupiter, um, the Voyager um, went past Jupiter, Galileo has studied Jupiter. Um, and so with those past missions that we've sent before, we believe that underneath this icy crust at Europa, there's this global liquid ocean, this saltwater ocean. And everywhere that we have found water here on planet Earth, we have found life. And so that's one of the reasons we're so excited to learn more about Europa and to study it in so much more detail, because we've had these hints that there's this global liquid ocean, that we have the water that life needs to survive. We believe that there are the chemicals in that ocean, but we're not sure. Um, and we also know that there we need um, an energy source for that life to exist as well. So we're hoping to study um, all different facets of Europa, learn more about the geology, the interior, the composition, so we can understand sort of those three different components of what life needs to exist. That being, those three components being the water, the energy, and the chemistry. That water is so deep down. Tell us about that and, and how you can study what's there when it is so deep. Yeah, it's a, a great question, right? So I've, I've said that there's this icy crust. So how can you see um, a global liquid ocean if you can't, you know, image it directly? And so we have lots of different ways that we can learn more about that ocean that's all the way out at Europa. We have um, a radar instrument on board called Reason that's going to help us see through the ice um, to help us figure out how deep that icy crust might be. 
um, and you know how uh, deep the ocean might be under that. We have other science instruments that we will use to help us learn more about the deep interior of Europa. Again, you know, help us learn more about that icy crust, help us learn about the ocean, help us learn more about the, the mantle and the core underneath. And then we have uh, another, um, it's not a science instrument exactly. We're actually going to be doing a, a gravity radio science experiment using another instrument on board. And so that will be an independent way to help us figure out um, more about the ocean at Europa. So we'll essentially be using that separate um, instrument on board to analyze the signals that are going to and from the spacecraft and how those signals are changing, which can be an indication of that global ocean that's underneath the icy crust at Europa. So even though we can't see this global ocean, there are still lots of ways that we can interact with it to help us learn more about it. Now, I don't know if you can even begin to tell us how that you could plan a journey like this, uh, if you can, but also I want to know how your role changes as of today, how your day-to-day -day work changes. Yeah, it's a good question. So I mentioned I've, I've been on this project for five years. And so leading up to today, one of our, our big goals has been, of course, to plan this trajectory. How can we safely launch a spacecraft from the Earth fly it past Mars, fly it past Earth, get it all the way out to Jupiter, and then design a trajectory about Jupiter so that we can perform all of this science at Europa. Now, a lot of people um, who maybe aren't familiar with Jupiter or are not super familiar with the Europa Clipper mission might think that our spacecraft is actually orbiting Europa. And because it's called Europa Clipper, that's a, a fair assumption to make. But we're actually not orbiting Europa. Um, Jupiter has a really intense radiation environment. It's the biggest planet in our solar system. And so so we can't orbit Europa directly because Europa is really close to Jupiter and it's kind of sitting right in that hot zone of radiation at, at Jupiter. And so instead of orbiting Europa, we're actually orbiting Jupiter. And that means that we'll fly past Europa um, about 49 times to over the, the course of our, our primary science mission once we get all the way out to Jupiter. And so as we fly past Europa over those 49 different flybys over what we call the tour phase, we're building up global coverage. And so we fly past it at different altitudes, at different speeds, at different lighting conditions. And um, over time, we'll build up this global coverage and we'll fly over the whole moon and learn all about it um, as, as best we can. And so it, it's complicated to, to do that. <laughs> Um, but it takes um, and it takes a lot of effort and energy, but it's a lot of fun as yeah, well. I can only imagine. Now, if you do discover the conditions for life, what will that hint to us about our universe? Yeah, it's a great question. I think one of the questions that we've had, you know, as a as a species for a very long time is whether or not we're alone in the universe. I think it's very natural for anybody anywhere standing on planet Earth to look up to the sky and wonder, what is out there? Are we alone? Is there somebody else? Is there something else out there? And as far as we know, life only exists on planet Earth. So we don't really know how common life may or may not be in our solar system and elsewhere in the universe. And so if we can better understand the conditions for life and better understand what types of worlds might be habitable and what types of worlds could support life, that opens up a whole new range of places that we could start looking for life realistically, both in our solar system and elsewhere in the universe. And it would be amazing if in my lifetime, um, we'd be able to answer that question of whether or not we're alone. And again, you know, Clipper is not looking for life directly. I know we, we mentioned that at the beginning, um, but being able to establish that a place like Europa, even though at first glance doesn't look like it might support life, if we could still establish that actually, in fact, life could exist there, I think that would be really exciting because then as we continue to explore other places in our universe, we can look at places that at first blush might not be super promising more closely and it can help us have more diversity and opportunities to try and find life elsewhere. Europa Clipper Navigation Engineer, Sarah Elizabeth McCandless. Great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you so much.